Hello everyone. So in this video, we will be covering past paper questions on differentiation and integration. So this in this question, a curve has equation y equals to 4 over 3x plus 1 square. You need to find the equation of tangent to the curve at the point where the line x equals to negative 1 intersects the curve. So this means that you have a curve. I don't know what it looks like, but let's say you have a curve and the line you need to find the equation of the tangent to the curve at a point where the line x equals to negative 1. So let's say x equals to negative 1 intersects the curve at this point P. And you are being asked to find the equation of the tangent at this point. Okay? So, in order to find the equation of the tangent, you need a gradient of the tangent and you need the point. So, equa let's say the curve equation is 4, 3x plus 1 raised to the power of negative 2. So, when you take dy by dx, you differentiate the function, you get minus 8 times 3x plus 1 raised to the power of negative 3 times the differentiation of the inside bracket which is 3 and the gradient expression comes out to be minus 24 over 3x plus 1 cube that's the gradient expression now the gradient at point P would mean that the x coordinate is negative 1 negative 1 so the gradient comes out to be So if you work this out, the gradient comes out to be 3. Okay. Now when, when x is negative 1, using the equation of the curve, you can easily figure out the y coordinate. And the y coordinate also comes out to be 1. So this means that the point P has coordinate of negative 1 and 1. Now you need to find the equation of the tangent. Equation of a tangent would be in the form of y minus y1 equals to m x minus x1. So y minus y1, the gradient is 3, x minus x1, y minus y1 is equal to 3x plus 3. So y equals to 3x plus 4 is the equation of the tangent that passes through this point. Okay, so in this question, the question says that the function is defined for x greater than 0 and is such that the differential of the function f prime of x is 2x minus 2 over x squared. The curve y equals to f of x passes through the point 2 comma 6. and you are being asked to find the equation of the normal to the curve okay so in order to find the equation of the normal to the curve at point p i must have the coordinates of p which is already given to me in the question and you need to find the gradient of the normal at to the curve at p so first of all the f prime of x expression has been given to you right you want to find f prime of x at x2 and this will give you the gradient of the function at the curve to the curve at p so that's your gradient of the tangent in order to find the gradient of normal it will be then simply negative reciprocal minus 2 over 7 now equation of normal would be y minus y1 
equals to gradient times x minus x1 if you rearrange this equation you will get 7y plus 2x equals to 46 that's your equation to the normal in the second part they are saying find the equation of the curve in order to find the equation of the curve you need to integrate the func integrate the gradient function so if you integrate the gradient function so if you integrate the gradient function you get 2x square over 2 minus 2x raised to the power of minus 2 plus 1 negative 1 over negative 1 plus a constant of integration so simplify this equation you get x square plus 2 over x plus c that's f of x the equation of the curve now this equation uh, is just the general form for the time being because you don't know the value of c you can find the value of c by plugging in the coordinates of p which is 2 comma 6 so f of 2 would be 2 square plus 2 over 2 plus c and f of 2 is 6 because p k coordinates were 2 comma 6 so c comes out to be 1 therefore function equation would be x square plus 2 over x plus 1 that's the equation of the curve in the third part they are saying find the x coordinate of the stationary point and state with the reason whether this point is a maximum or minimum so in order to find the stationary point you will have to set the differentiation dy by dx or f prime of x to be equal to 0 okay and find the value of x and then in order to find whether this point is maximum or minimum you take the second derivative and find the nature of the curve so i'll show you how to do this so So the differential equation was 2x minus 2x raised to the power of negative 2, okay? Which can be written as 2x minus 2 over x square. Now f prime of x, in order to find the stationary point, stationary value of x, you need to plug f prime of x as 0, okay? So when you solve this equation, you must get x equals to 1 so the stationary value of the function is occurring at x equals to 1 now you find the second derivative so you differentiate this function again you get 2 and differentiation of minus 2 x raised to the power of minus 2 would be plus 4 x raised to the power of negative 3 okay now you plug x as 1 in the second derivative and you get a positive value since f double prime of at 1 is greater than 0 hence the point is a minimum point all right so the base of a cuboid has side of length x centimeter and 3x centimeter and the volume of the cuboid is given to you. In the first part you are being asked to show that the total surface area of the cuboid is given by this expression. So you have been given a cuboid okay. The length and the sides are of length x and 3x and the height is h. The volume of a cuboid is given by 
the length times width times height so x times 3 x times h and the volume of the cuboid is given to you as 38288 so the first step would be to form to represent h in terms of the height in terms of x so you get 288 over 3x square now as far as the surface area of the cuboid is concerned it is just the area of all sides so surface area of the cuboid would be just the area of all the faces of the cuboid so it will be 2 times 3x square because the bottom area is 3x square so the top area is also 3x square so you just double it similarly 2xh plus 2 times 3xh and when you simplify it you get 6x square plus 8xh now you need to show that area is equal to this and you in this expression there is no h so that is why we in in the start of the question and using the volume information we had to make h we have to represent h in terms of x and now we will just replace h with 288 over 3x square okay so simplify this and you would be able to show what they have asked in the question 768 over x now as for the second part the question says that given that x can vary find the stationary value of a and determine its nature now in order to find the stationary value of a first of all you need to differentiate this expression of a dA by dx and set it equal to 0 and find the value of x for which a has a stationary value now this stationary value of a can either be maximum or minimum at that particular value so we will take the second derivative and then find the nature of the curve so all you need to do is so area is 6x square plus 768 x raised to the power of negative 1 first of all differentiate the area equation you get 12x plus 768x raised to the power of negative 2 then set dA by dx as 0 and solve for x so x comes out to be 4 which means that at x equals to 4 stationary value of a is occurring so what is the stationary value so you will plug in 4 in the area equation and the area that you get is 288 centimeter square now this area of 288 centimeter square is a stationary value but in the question we have to also find whether this whether this uh, value of a is maximum or minimum so you take the second derivative of the area equation and you get 12 minus 768 times minus 2 and ok so you must get this 12 minus 1536 over x cube now d squared a over dx square value needs to be find at x equals to 4 so when you place in 4 you get negative 12 which is less than 0 since the second derivative d square a over dx square is negative therefore this the stationary value is a maximum value hence the maximum area that's the nature so a curve has been given to you in this question which is intersecting with the line at these two points and you are being asked to find the area of the shaded region okay 
So the first thing in such kinds of questions is to find the points of intersection. And you can easily find points of intersection by solving the two equations simultaneously. So when you simplify this you get minus x square plus 10x negative 21 equals to 0 and solve this quadratic equation you will get the two values of x 3 and 7 which means that this is the lower limit 3 and this is the upper limit 7 okay now when you integrate the curve When you integrate the curve from 3 to 7, it will give you the area under the curve. Okay, this entire area. And when you integrate the line with from limit 3 to 7, you get the area under the line bounded by the line and the x-axis, this area. Now in order to find the shaded area, you need to subtract the two areas. So the easy and quicker way would be to integrate all of them together. So in, so in order to find the shaded area, what you can do is you can integrate the curve that was minus x squared, the upper curve minus x squared plus 12x minus 20 and then sub also subtract the line equation which is 2x plus 1 because the limits are same so you can integrate them together by following the upper curve minus the lower curve and then integrate for the same limit 3 and 7 so simplify this expression you get Now at this stage you are required to in integrate it. So x cube over 3 plus 10x square over 2 minus 21x and the limit upper limit is 7 and the lower limit is 3. Now you place in the upper limit in the expression and evaluate the result you get negative 49 over 3 minus the answer of the lower limit and the resulting area comes out to be 32 over 3 which is 10 whole 2 over 3 unit square so that's the area of the shaded region the diagram shows part of the curve y equals to x minus 2 raised to the power 4 so that's this curve and the point a 1 comma 1 the tangent at A cuts the x-axis, so the tangent line cuts the x-axis at B and the normal at point A cuts the y-axis at C. And we are being asked to find the coordinates of B and C. Okay, so in order to find the coordinates of B and C, I must have the equation of the tangent and the equation of the normal. So in order to find the equation of the uh, tangent you need the gradient of the tangent and for that we have to differentiate the curve at point a so if y was equals to x minus 2 raised to the power of 4 then dy by dx would be 4 times x minus 2 q and dy by dx at x equals to 1 which is at point a the gradient comes out to be negative 4 okay so if the gradient is negative 4 let's make the equation of the tangent which is y minus y1 so the point a is 1 comma 1 y x coordinate is 1 and the y coordinate is 1 the gradient is negative 4 x minus x1 the equation of the tangent comes out to be minus 4x plus 5 and 
D, since B lies on the x axis, so the y coordinate would be 0 and the x coordinate comes out to be 5 over 4. So B has a coordinate of 5 over 4 comma 0. Similarly, to find the coordinates of C, you will have to, okay, now I do have the gradient of the tangent. So the gradient of normal line would be simply the negative reciprocal 1 over 4 and the equation of the normal would be y minus y1 m x minus x1 so 4y equals to x plus 3 now the normal line curves the y axis at point c which means that at y axis point c will have x coordinate of 0 so y comes out to be 3 over 4 therefore c's coordinates are 0 comma 3 over 4 okay now in the second part you are being asked to find the distance ac and distance ac can be found by the distance formula the coordinates of c are 0 comma 3 over 4 so y x2 minus x1 the whole thing square plus y2 minus y1 the whole thing square square root so when you work it out you get square root of 17 over 4 that's the distance the last part says find the area of the shaded region Now, when I know that this point is 1 and this point is a minimum point on the curve. So let's first find what the minimum point on the curve would be. So for that I'll have to differentiate the curve and set it equal to 0. So I already have the gradient expression as 4 times x minus 2 the whole thing cube. I'll set dy by dx equals to 0 and find the value of x at which this minimum value of the function occurs. So the value comes out to be 2. So this lower point is 2. This point is 1. Therefore when I integrate the curve I'll get the area bounded by the curve and the x-axis from 1 to 2. This entire area. okay so the area is simply the integration of the curve from 1 to 2 so it comes out to be x minus 2 raised to the power 5 over 5 and the upper limits are 2 and the lower limit is 1 so when you plug in the limits you get 1 over 5 unit square that's the entire area bounded by the curve and the x-axis the shaded region uh, the, sh the one which I just shaded now in order to find the shaded region given in the question which was this I have to subtract the area of this triangle from the answer obtained right now so the B, B's coordinates were, X coordinate was 5 over 4. So this length would be 1 over 5 over 4 minus 1, 1 over 4. This, this height is 1. And in order to find the shaded area, shaded area would be the area of the curve minus the area of the triangle which is half times 1 over 4 times 1 okay so if you can work this out you get 0 
point zero seven five unit square. That's the area of the shaded region. Okay, so in this question, a curve has been given to you, and this is a shaded region bounded by the curve and the y-axis. The question says that the diagram shows part of the curve y equals to x square plus one. You need to find the volume obtained when the shaded region was rotated 360 degree about the y-axis. So when this shaded part would be rotated 360 about the y-axis, a solid of revolution would be formed. And we are required to find the volume. Now whenever we are required to find the volume when the shaded part is rotated in 360 degree in the y-axis, we need to take care of a couple of things. The first thing is that the function needs to be in y okay so the general form would be you need a function in y you need to square it okay there is pi also over there you need to integrate it with the y limits integrate the function with respect to y and plug in the y limits so as per our question pi times the function of y so y is equals to x square plus 1 so x would be equal to y minus 1 raised to the power of half so y minus 1 raised to the power of half now the this states that the function whatever the function is it needs to be squared and the limits would be for y so the limits are 1 and 5 so the lower limit is 1 the upper limit is 5 and you need to integrate the function with respect to y So this leaves us with y minus 1 dy. So integration of y minus 1 would be y squared over 2 minus y. The upper limit is 5 and the lower limit is 1. When you place in these limits, you get for the upper limit and for the lower limit you get this and you can work this out the volume comes out to be 8 pi unit cube